Here we are, guys, in beautiful San Diego, Monster Motivator TV number 44. It's hard to believe. I know number 44 already. I am really pumped uh, about this episode because, as you guys know, entrepreneurship is my oxygen. It's what, it's what drives me, and I love it. And when I'm in, in, another room, in a room with another entrepreneur that has been down so many different roads, figured out how to keep moving forward, how to conquer those obstacles, how to, how to work through life's boot camps, right? Life's test. You can't get any better than that because you can keep all your theory. You can keep all your classrooms. At the end of the day, it's real world content for real world results. That's what we're all about here at Monster Motivated TV and we have the whole package for you today. My friend Barbara Ham has been an entrepreneur for how long? Many years. <laughs> okay, she's been an entrepreneur for many years, many years, and she's she's seen a lot of things. Yes, fell down. Yes, conquered. Fell down. Yes, conquered. Yes, and never failed. Always learned. Always would that learned. be would that be accurate? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So this is this is why I'm so pumped. I love this because this is real, true, live and in color wisdom, and that you don't get any better than that. Um, and we reached, we connected through in social media, and Barbara was at the Thrive event, so she was able to, to check out the keynote. What'd you think? I came to the Thrive event just to meet Dave. Look, I am feeling the love. <laughs> I am feeling the love. That's the only, <laughs> not the only reason, but that is the primary reason. Okay. We had connected on Facebook, we had chatted a little bit, but I wanted to meet you in person. So now I need to know, what did you think? It was amazing. It, okay. You know, the speakers were life-changing. The messages were heartfelt. The messages were real. Um, the energy. The energy was through the roof. Um, everybody was touched, moved, and changed. That's it. And that's that was the goal. Yeah. That was absolutely the goal. And I know, you know, um, Martine was very concerned that I kept the PG, and I told him I would. <laughs> <laughs> I have more fun in the R-rated, but I, um, uh, I kept PG. the PG for yeah. him. So uh, he's very thankful he didn't age too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but introduce yourself and let everyone know where you started, where you're at today, and where you see yourself going. But I want to talk about really where, where did all this start? Wow. So that's what I'm interested in. Ooh. Um, had a pretty rough childhood. Okay, where'd you grow up? I grew up in, uh, born and raised in Burbank, California. Okay. Uh, went to Burbank High. Um, had a really, really tough child. Had a really tough father. Mm -hmm. Um, I left home when I was 16 years old. Okay. Never to return. Right. Um. You just knew it was, just it was, needed to be. It needed to be, okay? Mm -hmm. It was him or me, and the only way to survive was to leave. Right. So I talked to the school principal. I was in 10th grade. Okay. And they were going to put me in a reform school, and that was not going to happen in my life. Okay. And um, I said, give me a chance. Let me get an apartment a wow. block from school. Let me get a job to support myself. Let me keep my grades up. At 16? 16. 16. That's, you know, we call that, right? That's. <laughs> That's called monster mode, baby. That's monster mode. That is, wow. It was tough. And so I got okay. three jobs. Um, At 16, going to school. Going to school. 10th grade. 10th grade. Holy moly. I worked for Mr. Big um, Hamburger down okay. the road from the high school from 3 until 6. Okay. Um, walked over to H&R Finance and mm -hmm. worked from 6 to 8. Mm -hmm. And then went to the drive-in movie theater with a um, cashier till 10 o'clock. And still went to school. And went to school. Studied from midnight to 4. Got wow. up and did it for 3 years. Wow, and graduated. And graduated. Okay. And um, did you did you like school, or did you tolerate school? I tolerated you were, school. You're an entrepreneur. We just I tolerated just that tolerated nonsense. It. You know, they had me in Catholic school, all girls Catholic school, wow. for eight years, and I hated it. I'm I mean, sorry, but but that's was, your DNA. It was regimented. I mean, we yeah. had to wear uniforms. We had to march on the the campus every morning. It was just so structured, and it was. I just hated every and, minute. And back in the day, the nuns, at least from the East Coast, they weren't afraid no. to use those rollers. That's right. That's why my fingers were crooked. 
So, so this is really neat. Let me, let me just so you guys don't think I'm texting why why we're talking. I want to bring up the um, I want to bring up the show because we can't read the comments or the questions. So I can bring them up uh, just so you guys don't think that I'm uh, uh, detached here because this is awesome. This is and what's really cool for me as the host is you always set these expectations, right? And and you say, well, how's this going to go? But it, it's already it's already blowing away what my what my expectations were. So I love this because it's real. Because it's real. And let me touch on something here before we even go further. You had a your first thing you said is you had a very rough childhood. You had a very tough father and you had to get it was either you or him. But looking back, tell ask me tell me if this is accurate. It's one of the best gifts he ever gave you as far as a foundation and as far as a character building. Right? It took me a while to understand it. To right? I, I never forgave him. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I gave I learned compassion for him okay. because I learned at sixteen he left his home right. never to return. Right. And took all that anger and that all that stuff built in and didn't know how to let it go except through physical okay. or verbal abuse. And so it took me many, many years to, to get to the point that I could feel compassion and sorrow that he never had joy, that mm -hmm. he never had felt blessed, that he never felt happiness. Mm -hmm. And he just had all of this stuff built and he didn't, he didn't have the resources or the knowledge to find out a different way you know, to let go. And so... That's exactly, there's two things I want to go here with, right? But that's exactly it. Because here's what people have to understand. However you were brought up, however it went down, the parents, the grandparents, the adults, whoever they were raising you could only, only do it to their own level of awareness, so right? Their own level of awareness. Now, so let, let's give them an example of you. You're early on, you're young, you're very angry with them, you're very confused, you're very this and that and that. But as you get older, as life pulls you through, your level of awareness starts to rise to where now you can see past that fog. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it, it came, I, got, I think my internal motivation, my motivator, uh -huh. was to make him wrong about yeah. everything that he said. I'm going to prove Not you true. wrong. Right. And I could have taken two paths. One was the dark path, mm -hmm. and one was a higher path. And I chose to succeed in spite of all of it right. and make him wrong and say everything you're saying is not true, and I'm going to prove you wrong. Right. And, see, what I want to do is, is share with people. I'm trying to bring the video up again in case we have questions, but... but there's, you always, always, always have a choice, right? Now, Barbara could have said, you know what? He's right. I, I don't belong doing this and just let it stop her. But what she did is, and a lot of that has to do with her DNA. She's just an entrepreneur at heart, right? It's, let me use this as fuel, yes. right? It totally was my fuel. It, so, so it's your propeller yes. instead of your anchor. Absolutely. Is that, that, 1,000, you said it perfect. Okay, now here's the other gift, right? Because now we can, our level of awareness is higher and we can look back. I have to believe 1,000% that it didn't matter what his intentions were. It didn't matter what his level of awareness was. Without you leaving at 16, working three jobs, putting yourself through school, it's, you still wouldn't be the person you are today. So, so to me, whether he realized it or not, it's the best gift, right? Yes. Because you were strong enough to handle it, right? And life says, okay, you want to move out. Okay, you want a job. Let's see really what you're all about. Right. And, and that's... It's true. And now, the chills. And now <laughs> I can say thank you. Yes. Because yes. Now I can say thank you. And it took me a lot of years to be able to say thank you. Thank you. Yes. Because it beca I became the person I am today because of it. Yes. And I would not have been the person I am today if I hadn't it's, had those. It's impossible. No. It's, it's so, all right. And now I can say thank you with a smile. Yes. 
Yes, because it is a gift. It is a gift. And it does, doesn't matter why. Right. Right? Because no. it doesn't matter. No. Right? It's true. And so it is a gift. And I say thank you. And I, I love you it. know, and I just say, you know, he's passed away. Mm -hmm. I wish you were here today to mm -hmm. really see um, what became of me. Right. Um, he's not, but it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. It doesn't. It doesn't. It and so, what? It, I don't know what it was more of, like you said, the gasoline, the propeller. It, it's, it's, it's that propeller, right? Yeah. Now, you can, it, you could, that could have been your anchor. Absolutely. Right? That could have been your crutch. Absolutely. That could have been, and I just did a, a video on this this morning about, um, uh, uh, it's about a, a, addressing, identifying, and moving forward, not letting it, not letting it pull you back. Um, but we always have that, you know, we have that. It's a tug and pull, tug and pull. It's just, it goes on for a while until you make a stand. Yeah. Until you say, I'm done. I am done, and this is the path I choose. Exactly. And it's making a decision. And I learned early on, there were some real critical things that I implemented this whole time period, and I've learned and adjusted throughout this time period on how to achieve success. Okay. And the first one was make a decision. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get motivated. Okay. Get determined. Okay. Um, I have a couple notes here. Well, we have uh, we have Lisa that that chimed in. She said, uh, "Thank you, Lisa," and she said, uh, "Lisa Harris McLean resonating with me one hundred percent." Right. You, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, Darlene is having trouble hearing us. She's probably not having trouble hearing me because <laughs> not many people do. So okay. we'll just speak up a little bit because, because again, they want to know who you are, where you came from. So let's do this. Let me, let me ask you this. Now you're out of high school. You graduated. Now what? Well, I made a mistake and got married at a young age. Okay. Um, I was always seeking love, mm -hmm. and I thought this was love. Right. Well, it wasn't, okay? Um, the marriage lasted five years. I got a divorce, and I realized in order for me to really succeed, I mm -hmm. needed to leave the territory. Okay. I left uh, uh, Burbank okay. and moved to San Diego. Okay, you just needed a fresh start. I just start. needed to get clear and a fresh start and a clean mindset. Let me ask you this. What did you learn? What were some of the lessons you learned in those five years that, that, that again, a classroom isn't going to give you? Um, I learned that I needed to make my own decisions okay. for myself okay. and not be influenced by every other, everybody else's opinion. Or, or, or Why aren't you married? Why aren't you have a child? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why aren't you this? And I go, give me a breathing room. Right. And that's why I had to leave. I needed a breathing room. I needed my own space where I wasn't um, condemned or judged or impacted with other people's opinion about my life. Right, right. Because they don't know. They, they didn't know what was in my heart and my soul and my, my, what I needed to do with my life. Yeah, your being. So, so, again, this is a great, great golden nuggets here because so many people, I'm the fear barrier. Right? I don't want to pull everyone through their fear barriers. But what I'm, and there's so many different fears. But what I find almost to be the number one fear is going to be not the fear of doing it, mm -hmm. not the fear of what if, but for the most part, mm -hmm. but the fear of what other people think. It's such a stopper, yeah. right? And it stops you from finding out who you truly are exactly. and being okay with it. That's why I believe the greatest gift that a parent can give a child early mm -hmm. on from infant to teenager is self-image, mm -hmm. self-esteem, right? Self-worth, right? Because you didn't get that, you're searching somewhere else, realize pretty quickly, right? Five years is quick, that it's not that. Right. So now you're on this journey trying to figure that out. I'm trying to find right? me. I'm yes. trying to find out who really I am. Yes. And what make what is my makeup and what do I want? What is my soul's purpose? And, right. You know, and I just needed breathing room. I was smothered. I right. was trapped by everybody around me giving the opinion of my life. Right. And, and not really knowing. And not knowing and asking. Not and taking asking. the time. Taking the time. And, and yeah. They just had opinions. They had no 
interest, mm -hmm. just opinion. Yeah. And I said, done. Again, it was done. My right. whole, when I make a change and I say done, Oh, me too. It's done. It's, it's, There's it's, no second. It's done. I'm already gone. I'm gone. Right. I moved on. And I tell people, all you're going to see is brake lights. Exactly. <laughs> so I packed my bags. I packed up. I had a son. I packed okay. up my son. I had no job. And I was talking to my employer and said, I have, I want you to move to Santa Barbara or San Diego. And I'm not sure which. And he said, well, Santa Barbara at that point was a college town and San Diego was a Navy town. Okay. And um, I chose San Diego. Okay. Didn't have a job. Just packed up my stuff. How old was your son? My son was two. Okay. At the time. So, you, so you, here's what's happening, right? Is you, and so everyone knows she's building. Barbara's building what I call the. I know we you call it something else. Your inner GPS, right? right. I know you. What do you call it? My IGS. Okay. My and, internal guidance system. Okay, and which is more accurate than GPS. But at the end of the day, whatever title you want to put on it, it's still our intuition, right? right? So you're building that that intuition, that trust, right? And that, in, yeah, because it's like a muscle. It, I get this knowing, and I can't explain it, but it's a knowing. It's just the knowing that I have to do this. Yeah. There's no doubt. Yes. And and fear for me, I identified saying, why should I fear something I've never done before? Okay. Why put that label on it? Okay. Because. I can choose any label I want about my next step. Right. Why would I choose fear right. when I haven't done it? Why so should I label? Know. Then right. why should I label it fear? Maybe it's excitement. Maybe it's adventure. Maybe it's both. Both. Right. Right. And and I have a real funny feeling that we're going to agree on this a thousand percent. Why, if you're going to fear anything, fear regret instead of fearing failure. Yeah. You know, exactly. fear regret because yes. as a as an entrepreneur, that's my biggest fear. If I have a fear, it's I don't want to leave with anything on the table. Exactly. Anything exactly. on the table. And and if you're not sure about that, right, go to any convalescent home. Sit oh, down, really, right, true. and talk to the 85, 90, 95 year old people and say, some might say, you know what, I have no regrets. It was a great ride. And then some might say, most. Man. I, and, and you can't get that back. No. Right? You can't get that back. No. So I love that. That I love the perspective of fear and putting it in its place. I call it the bully, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to learn how to teach you how to get your lunch money back from this bully. There you right? go. Because yeah. how, do you, how do you stop a bully? You step up. Right. If not, it keeps happening. Well, fear was everything that was given to me. And okay. it was all their opinions and their choices for me. Mm -hmm. And I had to get a clean slate and really start listening to my self okay. and my intuition and okay. start take tearing off the onion skin, mm -hmm. the layers to find out what this soul yeah. was. Yeah. What was, am I supposed to do with my life? My life. Yeah. What are my choices? Right. And it took some time to, you know, start having the trust that I could trust myself okay. and not listen to somebody else. Okay. That I could trust my own instincts, that I could trust my own judgments. Were they always right? No. no of course. It's never going to be. But through the paths, I learned to to my internal guidance system, my IGS, that when I get this knowing that I'm supposed to do something, I don't question it. I just take the next step. I want to show you something. We talked about, and I said to you before we went on air, I said, your story, I'm so excited because you lived it, right? And you're still living it. Check this out. People are just, all right? Oh Can't, Julia, this girl is an, you got to see her episode. When I tell you a beast, she is a beast mode. And she knows I mean that very well. Can't care what people say. Acceptance is the key, right? Accepting your own self. Uh, Lisa, yes, decide, plan, move forward, right? There. They, they're, they're completely resonating with you because this is real. Yeah. This is real stuff. So now you're in San Diego, a two-year-old little boy, yeah. right? No, no job. Now what? Well, um, I got an, uh, a motel room actually in Pacific Beach. I had some money saved from my working and um, didn't have, had to find a place to live, but got um, rented a motel room <laughs> right? in Pacific <laughs> Beach. To right. start with, okay, yeah. and um, 
I love had it. to find a job. Yeah. So I just didn't know anybody in San Diego, didn't know and have any contacts, and just put my. At that point, what were your like? What were you leaning on as far as skills? Because besides hard, hard work and lacing up your boots and getting to work, if that's who you are, what what were you looking like? What was your thought process then? Like, what was going through your mind? I wanted to find a job where I could really identify my skills. And which were? Uh, which I knew were. Um, oh, so you were searching. I was still searching. Okay. Okay. I hadn't identified, but I I just wanted to find out more about me. I mm -hmm. wanted a, a position that would test me to show me and reveal to me yeah. what my God-given skill set and my talents were. I, and I love the first word that you use, test me. Test See, me. See, bring it. Bring it on. Bring it. I've seen the tough times. <laughs> right. Nothing could be as hard as what bring, I went through. Bring it. Bring it on. Bring it. And okay. I, I love that. Bring I, it but, on. but I love that because that's what we want to highlight. That's what we want to hit home. Just Bring, Bring it. it on. Right? Right. So now, what did you find? What did, what did you wind up doing? I ended up working for a newspaper. Okay. Uh, the Copley newspaper in La Jolla. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I interviewed people, which was really interesting. Okay. Nothing I'd ever done before. Mm -hmm. I worked at a hamburger shop, worked <laughs> at a movie theater, and worked at a um, collection. So you're being credit. tested. <laughs> and they put me in a position of interviewing people to do editorials. Okay. And I'm going, okay, what never done that before. Right. And um, my mentor was amazing. He said, I see within you so much talent, so much um, charisma, so much uh, value that you can bring to the people. And I was 20, what was I, 23, 4 years old. 23 years old, 24 with years old. With a two-year-old. With a two-year-old. In a brand new town. In a brand new you town. you nobody? Nobody. And you're still trying to find your skill set. I mean, that's, I that is monster mode, right? <laughs> that is monster mode, girl. And um, let me ask, I want to tell us about this mentor. Because that's my keynote, Tommy. It was amazing. Okay. He just showed up and he just scooped me up. And he just told me everything I wanted to hear as a child. Was he was he part of the company that you he worked for? He was my manager. Okay, okay. He was your manager. He was the editorial manager for the paper. Okay. And um, I didn't apply for that position. Mm -hmm. I applied for you know clerical positions. Mm -hmm. And then I they said I want you to talk to Steve, and I go okay. And mm -hmm. um, I talked to Steve and and told him you know what I mm -hmm. my past, mm -hmm. what I was here, and. Um, he said, I want to hire you. And I said, for which position? He said, um, in the editorial department. And I go, okay. <laughs> the deer in Doing headlights. what? <laughs> <laughs> what does he see, though? That's and the he thing. Sa and he said, you're an amazing person. I said, you don't even know me. He said, no, I know you. He said, you're amazing. He said, you have such charisma. You have such authenticity. You're so real. Um, you have such intuition. Um, you communicate with people. You connect with people. He saw your old soul. And I went, oh my God, who is this person? What was his first name? Do you know? Steve. Steve, okay. Now, here's what I want, because that's exactly my story, right? I call it the Tommy story. Right. I had, at, at 22, 23 years old, the first successful adult that said that he believed in me, right. and he showed me that. Um, now, what is some of the things that, that, that Steve set in you, like that, that really made aha moments? He believed in me. For, he was That's, the first person in my life at 23 years old who believed in me. Man, we walked And he didn't road. even know me. Yeah. I mean, he knew me for 20 minutes. Right, but he saw something. Here's the other thing that's very, very important. And I'm going to go a little spiritual here. Believe yeah, it or not, believe it or not, I'm a spiritual guy. So, here's what Barbara did, whether she could define it or not at the time. She attracted Steve into her life because she kept taking action, even though she was going through the darkness. And I always say this. It was. The darkness is only temporary as long as you keep moving forward. The only time it becomes permanent is when you move backwards. Right. right? So, right. you kept taking 
the that, next step. And you're going, I don't know where this staircase leads. <laughs> I don't even know if there is a staircase, exactly. but I see that next step. Right. Right? So he came into your life because of that, because of what you did, the action. It was amazing. So now how long were you working with Steve? I worked with Steve for five years. Oh, wow. 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 It was it was amazing. I mean, I learned so much about what my really talents were mm -hmm. and what my God-given gifts were. And I could really identify with them. And wow. it was things that I knew were true. Right. It wasn't somebody telling me, right. but I finally got it. And he reinforced it. And he just, yeah, he completely surrounded me with positive um, accolades all the time. You're amazing. You're gifted. You're this, you're that. And I went, oh, my God, where's the God? In my whole right. life. Yeah. Yes. Okay, 25 years, 24 years, and never heard any of that. Well, not only did you hear that, right, but you were the polar opposite. Completely. It was abuse. So yes. it's not even like somebody ignored you, no. right? So it was the actual oh. polar opposite. Now you have somebody that's, and at first, because that's what I did, I'm looking around going, God, is he talking to somebody else? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> and it was really confusing, and I really, and I hit this crossroads again of this battle inside. Because of the self-image. Yes. Right? Is he true? Is it not true? What does he want from me? What you know? It, yes. What, what what, it, what's going on here? Yeah. And what does he really he, want? Yeah. Who's this person? Right. Who does this? Right. <laughs> right. It's so foreign. It is so it, foreign. It's like you're I've looking never, at like he has three heads. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. and, I'm going, and and the more it started, and more that he, I realized he was sincere, hmm. and he was honest, and he was truthful, and, and real, and real, and authentic, and he didn't want anything from me. And I went, holy crap. Right. Really? Right. And then I start realizing those were my gifts. Those were my talents. Those really are who I am. These are what God gave me. Right. And right. then it was time to move on. Okay. So now five years. Five years later. You had this unbelievable classroom, right? Unbelievable. Life, life gave you, right? Yes. I really knew who I was as a person. Okay. And then I said, now, how do I want to contribute back to in my life? Okay. And I learned, amazingly enough, my soul's purpose. Wow. And at that time, so now you're close to 30? Yes. Okay. You learned your life's purpose at 30 years old, I did. right? Be really because of Steve. Absolutely. Okay. So where, where, what is that? My life's purpose is to inspire okay. and educate people to have a better life. And that's what you're doing right now. That's what you're doing right now. And I knew that that was to inspire, because I know what disempowerment felt like. Mm -hmm. I know how suppression felt like. And abuse. I knew how Look, abuse right? and Let's taking just... away your soul felt like. Right. And I didn't want anybody to feel the pain that I went through. I didn't want anybody to be suppressed. When they knew they had more in them to give. So you became the vehicle. You I became did. I was, that mouthpiece. I, yes, I was the instrument. Yes. And I say in my practice now that I'm the bridge. Mm. I'm the bridge from where you are to where you want to go. And it's interesting. I chose the path as a financial coach. Okay. Because money to me was freedom. Yes, and no question. It wasn't that money was everything, but it was what you could do with yourself and how you can contribute to others uh, man, that's so true. that made the difference. So I chose to be a financial coach. At 30? At 30. Okay, so that's what you, you that was found? I, your... I found my soul Yes. Wow. at 30. How awesome is that, especially where you came from? Oh. I mean, talk about growth. Yeah. You were like growing out of your skin. Right? I mean, exactly. Now, let me ask you this. How? Because, look, what you went through and the marriage, not only did you have to figure out how what you needed to do professionally, but how do I become a mom? I mean, because there's no handbook. No. Nobody handed you a handbook. No. So, how, how much did, did Steve help with that? Finding how to become that mom that you know you could be? Does it, was there any connection there? No, not necessarily, but what he gave me was confidence in my life. Okay. That kind Overall. of that just kind of spread that I know that whatever step, next step I took mm -hmm. 
that I find, he said, you're the most resourceful person I've ever met. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's the best compliment you can hear, right? Because yeah. as entrepreneurs, it's not because there's not enough business. It's not because your manager's no good. It's not because your employees are no good. It's because you lack resources. Exactly. Is that, is that? That's so true. So that's the greatest compliment. I mean. That was his <laughs> greatest compliment to me. He said, wow. no matter what you do with your life, you will all, always find resources. And I went, wow. So he gave me the confidence to know that whatever my next step was going to be, even though I didn't know how it was going to evolve, that the resources would show up for me. Right. You you just knew. I just there's this knowing inside. Yes. Uh, it's a nugget inside of me it, that I can't explain other than I get this knowing and I know I need to take that step. Yes. And and that, that's who we are. Yeah. Right? That's that's who we are. So now you start down this journey. Did you start your business or you work for somebody? No, I worked for um, several financial companies. Okay. I got my licenses. Um, and uh, was in financial services for 15 years. Okay. Um, I worked for a company, a financial company, and uh, in San Diego mm -hmm. a few years ago, and they actually came to me to be a, a radio talk show host on financial matters in San Diego. Okay. I thought that was the craziest thing ever because my dad said, you have no voice, right. and your voice doesn't matter. And they came, I didn't search them out. They came to me. And right. I'm going, huh? You want me to be on the radio? I've never done that before. Right. Uh, no, we want a woman's perspective. It's a men's world. Right. But you want that test. And I went. Deep down, you want that yeah, test. Bring right? it on. Right? Okay. That's moxie. Right? Bring it on. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know. I've never done this before. Um, let's give it a shot. And it makes it even better. In a weird way, doesn't it? Because of our DNA. It just makes it better because it scares you and excites you at the same time. It does. And it's that's totally, it's, it is. Excitement is scary, here? and you go, okay, combustion, okay? Is, is that why we're here? Exactly. Right? I mean, exactly. who wants that safe ride? No. <laughs> so <laughs> they said, no, we really we really like your voice. We really like wow. your your intonation. We like your passion. We like, you know, the way that you communicate. Mm -hmm. Your energy. We just like everything about you, and we want you to be the spokesperson on radio, TV in San Diego as a woman's voice. And I went, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> right? Be careful what you wish for, oh right? Oh, my God. And then I went, sorry, Dad, you were wrong again. So but you're still working for this uh, financial company? I was. Okay. I was working for the financial company. And, um, and I went to them and said, you know, this has been um, brought to me. What do you think? And they, think it, they said, I think it's an amazing idea. Go do it. So this is your full-time gig? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And I went, oh my God. And then I loved it. I, you know, it was just natural. Yeah. It was yes. like talking here. Yes. You know, um, it was called Financial Forum. Mm -hmm. And what I did is we would have a topic, mm -hmm. and then I would bring the financial advisors that were specialists in that area. It was a call-in show. And um, I would host it. Wow. And receive the call, ask the questions, let the advisors talk, and it, again, it was inspirational and educational, my sole purpose. Your purpose, yep, exactly. Just now, a much bigger audience. Exactly. How cool is that? And I, I mean, thought, who would think from this child who was, you know, scared to have her dad walk in the door to now being a radio host? And, you know, I love this, because, again, they hear me say it all the time, it's the same recipe, just different ingredients. But because you, you're taking that action, because you're moving forward, there's things that happen in our lives that the best Hollywood screenwriters couldn't write. Right. Is that, is that, it's that's your really question? true. It's <laughs> really true. And, and I think the thing is, is to, when opportunities show up, don't, um, mis oh. don't overthink it. Yes, yes, yes. Go with your gut. Yes. Go with your IGS, your internal guidance system. Go with what you feel the next step is. Yes. And the resources will show up. And, and they did. And, and here's the thing. This is not coming from somebody that, this is coming from real world. This is it. This is coming from the real world experience and what is wisdom. And nothing trumps wisdom. No. 
nothing trumps wisdom. No. So how long have you had, did you have the uh, I radio had the show? radio show for three years. Okay. And what I realized as I continued to grow mm -hmm. is that it was great, it was fun to talk about, but I'm a people person. Mm. I needed to see the eyes. I needed to see the face. Wow. I needed to see the body language. Yes. And when you're in a booth with ears and a mic, you know, you don't get that personal connection. Wow, we, that is so cool that you said that because the whole reason that Monster Motivator TV is what it is is because I call it a podcast on steroids, right? It's, um, I don't want to do a podcast because I need this. I do too. I need this. I do too. I, it's my oxygen. It is. It is absolutely, okay. It is. That is, And wow. so I realized, okay, All right. I've hit another plateau. Yeah, you're, you're, you're done. I'm done. All right, now what? And so I went back and worked with some financial companies, and I was supposed to be promoted to a regional sales, a regional district manager okay. for a financial company, okay. a national. And the promotion was given to somebody else. Okay. And I was really disappointed, and I said, you know what? This was two years, of, two and a half years ago. Um, oh, really? I've only want, I, I really want my own agency. I really want my own company. I want to do my thing yes. again. Yes. It's without boundaries. Without yeah. exactly yeah. without the structure and the boundaries. Let me do it my way. And so uh, the promotion was given to somebody else, and I said, "Okay, I'm done. I'm going to go open up my own company." That's what pushed you out. Your dad yeah. pushed you out of that yeah. nest, right? Yep. Yeah. As you're growing, it pushed you out, right? Exactly. And you had to flap those wings. Yep. Now, because you know you deserve that and you said you know what I'm not mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. right yeah yeah so life is going okay let's so, see what okay. you got <laughs> all right bring it on <laughs> right. so it. I opened up my own agency and I wanted it to be different okay. and unique and distinct and you you I wanted, wanted it to, to be, be you. mine yes okay, which is to inspire and educate okay so I opened my agency and it's full service in that a financial advisor talks about investment planning. I look at the whole spectrum. I look at cash flow. I look at somebody's career path. Mm -hmm. Is this where you want to be? Oh, Is this okay. where you want your future, your financial income to come from? Where are you headed? I mean, I have all these things from the past that said, you know, question, question, yes. question. Yes. So I want to know about, are they on the right career path? I love Bring that. Them up. That's a huge value. It is. That you're not going to get. No. So it's, I could say I'm a financial planner by license, but I'm really a financial coach. Yes. Yes. Okay, because I look at the whole picture. I look at the family structure. Wow. I look, are you a single parent? I know what it feels like to be a single parent. Okay. Right. right. Um, are you an entrepreneur? I know what it feels like to be an entrepreneur. Do you have the mindset for an entrepreneur? And if you don't, it's okay. And that's right? true. And um, and I look at where's your cash flow and how are you how are you a good steward of your money, and do you have the tools to be a good steward of your money, and what kind of savings mentality do you have, and are you a spender, or are you a saver, do you realize you can create wealth, or are you realizing that it's not possible? What's your mindset? What's your belief? What's your belief? Love that. Okay. I love that. So you're getting to the core. I get to the core of that person. I want to know what makes them tick financially. Right. Because, because that's really your passion. It really is. That's the passion. That's it is. that's that's all. It's the person. It's the person. What's in yes. there? Yes. What's that core? You know. All the other stuff is a byproduct. It because is. Because you know so much of the financial. That's just we're gonna we'll put that the, together. Exactly. <laughs> right? I want to know what your mindset is. What's your beliefs? What are what the blockers? Thinking? What's stopping you? Yes, I love that. What don't you know? That I see. I that to me. Now you're talking about you talk about separating yourself. Yeah. That is separating yourself. Exactly. But it's so being so honest. It is. Like this is and and guess what? So many financial people are I call it the green personality where they're the accountants and right. the number crunchers. And they can't even they have they don't have that to tap into. That's okay. Right. That's who they are. But you're. You have an awesome combination because you have that um, 
I talk about the color personality test in my workshops, and, and there's four colors, and we all have them, but there's dominant. But you have that combination of that caregiver, mm -hmm. but also that red where, look, at the end of the day, that's great, but this is what needs to be done exactly. to get there. That's an exactly. awesome, that's a very unique combination. That's I love what that. Steve said about me. Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, you have the compassion because of the pain of the childhood. Mm -hmm. And who you are. And all that pain, and you don't want people to have pain. Mm -hmm. You want to fix that pain. Mm -hmm. You don't want people to have that pain. And I chose the financial path as the pain because it causes a lot of arguments, mm -hmm. divorces, Toxic, stress, right? all that craziness. Let's. I want people to walk out of my office with a smile on their face knowing that the fear, the worries, the doubts, the uncertainties are gone and there's a path. Wow. I see. That's a very, very unique combination that you have that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that, that's, a, that's an awesome. So now you're on your own. Oh, yeah. Two years ago, I opened my own agency. Okay. Um, and I, once I, it took me a year to get all, all my licenses, and I collected in my path um, over 30 years of advisors that are specialists in credit or debt. Okay, so you have or, the resources. You know, the resources of debt. <laughs> girl. Um, whether it's tax planning or whether it's wills and trust or whether it's cleaning up your credit or whatever, the, you know, buying mm -hmm. a car, leasing mm -hmm. a car, whatever the financial mess is or challenge is, right. I have the financial resource team around me. To, to make it to happen. To make it happen. To make it happen. And it was real important to me to not charge a fee to my clients. Okay. Interesting. Yes. And right. I, the reason is, is that most people are not financially educated and they haven't had one hour of proper financial education. Right. No question. And I don't want money to be in the way from them learning how to get their life in order financially. Okay. So I get paid by the financial companies that I work oh, with wow. and the affiliates that I work with. Oh. And my clients never write me a check. Wow. That's I want to take that pain away. Yeah. Yes. The pain is my driver right. from right. childhood. Right. So because that's the gift my dad gave me. That's, I mean, listen, you, and who you are, right? And also, look, let's face it. When you're talking about that, that unique combination, it doesn't hurt being a woman. Because, no, because true. a real good woman is a caregiver by right. heart, right? right? By heart. That's that's, that's who you are right. as a woman. And I always say uh, the baddest human being on the planet is a woman because <laughs> you guys can do it all and still look for more to do. That being said, this is an awesome, now you're two and a half years in. Yeah, I'm two and a half years in. I'm thinking, okay, now i got to create a client base. Okay. Okay. Um, I had to leave my clients behind mm -hmm. as I start my new company. And um, most of the people through my path have been taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting, like, I moved from Burbank to San Diego with nothing. Did you have a non-compete? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so when I moved as a, you know, a child, 23 years old, young adult, from Burbank to San Diego, I had nothing and to start from scratch. <laughs> so I knew that how that felt and right. what that looked like. Right. And here I am again, older in life, mm -hmm. opening up an agency and no clients. And I'm thinking, oh my God, okay, where's the, what do I have to do? Mm -hmm. So I started um, a business networking group. Okay, why right. not? <laughs> right? <laughs> that's, that's build these resources. Okay, let's, yeah. you know, so I thought, you know, I, I build the business network connection in San Diego. Uh, we meet once a month, and uh, it's a happy hour, social thing. I don't charge a fee again. Right. I don't want that yeah. deal. To come be a build, stopper. No, come build your business. Right. Get around people who are successful, people who are winners. You thrive on, you you energize by that. You know what I call that? You're, you're an excuse crusher. <laughs> I love it. There you I go. love it. Okay. So we meet, um, I thought I'd have maybe 50 people. It's a year and four months old, and we have 600 members wow. in a year and a wow. half. I know. It just, it just, you know what happened, truthfully? Two years ago, two, almost two and a half years ago, I hit another crossroads. Okay. And I had, I realized that each time I made the next step, mm -hmm. I had to eliminate 
the people in my life that kept me down. Okay, that is the golden nugget, right? That is identifying who those anchors are. Yes. But having the wherewithal, right? The the inner confidence, the self image, whatever title you want to put on it, to know this is so important. To know that as you're moving up, they're either coming up with you or they're falling away. But right. it's not your job. No. Right? It's no. not your job. So how how did that change? How did that enhance things and change when you start to identify and look around and say, you know what? These people are not are, are holding me down. They were. They okay. were. And um, or you're, I should say, I'm sorry, you're allowing them because yeah, I want to own it. It's right? true. You're, I want to own it. It's true. You're, and you're so allowing. There, the, a battle was still going on about who I thought I was and who I knew I was mm -hmm. and that challenge again because, because, of, the because of the outside influence okay. of going on. And I'm going, I'm done. Yeah, something, Again, something's not jiving. This is not working. Yeah. And I have to be honest. Yeah. One of the toughest decisions I had to make was saying goodbye and break the relationship with my son. Okay. Okay. But, but it was a toxic relationship. It was a last peg that I had to break because it wasn't good. It, it, it was, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried and tried so many years mm -hmm. to make that relationship right. But it was only one way. So you were becoming an enabler. Completely. Or you were an enabler, right? Yeah, and okay. it was toxic and it was bad and it was my dad resurfacing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't do this. And I finally cut the cord and said, I can't do it anymore. And how did that change your life? Since that happened, my life has flourished. Okay. Amazing. I opened up my agency. I started the business network connection with 600 members. I'm moving into doing uh, some other things in my life now. And we're going to talk about. And we are back. I know you guys uh, thought you lost us, but that's the beauty of live. We <laughs> want to keep you on your toes. Um, that relationship had to be the hardest to sever. It was. But the healthiest is what it sounds like. The healthiest for me, yes, for sure. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, hardest thing I by far. Do. My only son, my only child, my only son. But it just was, there was so much angst inside of this challenge of this relationship that I just, I knew there was more of me to come mm -hmm. out. There was more of me to soar. Mm -hmm. And it just, there was this tug and pull again, tug and pull again, tug and pull again. And the toxic just And toxic. I just realized I have so many more years on this earth to contribute. And if I'm going to become my best me and continue to grow right. and to continue to contribute and to continue to find out who more I am, mm -hmm. I have to say goodbye. Right. And you know what? It might not be forever. No. Who knows? But... But you did, and here's what I want to hit home, right? And I'm taking the parents off the hook now because once your child becomes an adult, it is their journey, not yours, right? right? Now, do you want to be a part of it? No question. Can you help? No question. But there's a big difference between helping and enabling. And one of the things I just got a lot of heat from, from some people, um, which I love, right? Um, that means I'm living and breathing. Uh, on LinkedIn, and I worded um, uh, a, a title, and I, and I just said, life doesn't give a fuck about you, right? And what I mean by that is, whether you like that word or you don't, whether that insults you or, or you feel offended, take that word out. But that statement needs to be told to kids growing up because now when they get that piece of paper from that university, when they leave, they're not, they understand that the real world, you need to prove yourself. You need to earn it, right? right. That's, what, that's why I said that that way, because it truly right. is. Then you wouldn't have so many kids at 30, 40 years old moving back with their parents, right. moving their kids back, right. because you have to earn it yes. in life. And I don't make up the rules. You don't make up the rules. No. Life makes up those rules. Right. Is that? That's really true. Right? And so, you know... 
I hope someday it's repaired and back mm -hmm. and of healthy. Course. Of, of course. course. But I know that the t as it was the toughest decision I made, it was my best decision for me. To help you. The healthiest for me to continue to evolve and be my best person and to be able to contribute back. You ready? So Lisa Harris McLean said, uh, this is great. She is sounding like me now. Diva Day out networking in, in San Antonio. <laughs> so it, we're Diva Day. Diva Day. I love that. I love that. Thank you, Lisa. Um, uh, Terry Williamson, that's someone you want to connect with. So you, you're going to be able to reconnect now with these women. Um, yes, throw me to the wolves and I'll come back leading the pack. Perfect. End of story. Right? <laughs> Talk about empowering because that's what you do. Because you're bringing the real world to people. You're bringing the real world to them. Now, you have your own business for two and a half years. And this is how we connected. You're still looking to test yourself. You still don't want to be in that comfort zone, right? Now what? <laughs> I love this. Well, I've had this push, internal push right? from inside yeah. for, that started um, the end of last year. And I saw myself on stage and I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing? Am I writing a book? Am I speaking? What am I supposed to be doing? Had no clue. And I go, why do I have this teeth? How, having... long have you, how long have you had it? For about eight months. Okay. It just kept coming it back. It kept coming back. You're on stage and there was an <laughs> audience and I'm going, what the heck is this? And I went to an event in January of this year. It was kind of a kickoff 2016. What are you doing with your life? How okay. are you going to, you know, what are you going to make of it? And it was a three-day event, and I was really disappointed with it. I stayed two hours and left. It was disorganized. There was no agenda. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what the speakers were. And I go, I was just disappointed. It was a Friday. I went home, and I slept, went to sleep. And I woke up in the middle of the night, and I knew what it was. And, I, and it was to step up to a higher plate and play out in the San Diego community doing some big events. Wow. In the areas of business, mm -hmm. which is my forte, mm -hmm. um, health, wellness, and fitness, which has always been an interest level of mine, okay. um, and um, financial. Okay. Okay. And I thought, what am I supposed to do with this? And then I really knew. The idea came, I have a business networking group, but I didn't want it to be a networking expo. I wanted it, again, to be distinct. A real event. I wanted it to be different. Okay. I always want to be different. I don't know why, but I want to do yeah. something distinct yeah. Yeah. that stands out. So the name came to me, Dynamic Impact Events. Dynamic Impact, Impact Events. Events. Okay, love it. And I thought, that's cool. I love it. Went down, I registered, got a DBA, did a fictitious filing, and I go, okay, what am I going to do with this? And then it just it just started quickly, starting in March, developing. Right. It just happened, you know. Like um, everything in your life, right? There's a the resources <laughs> came. And it happened so quick. It did. I got the name. Um, I'm having 12 speakers that are, and, and um, it's going to be a content-rich event, mm -hmm. no pitch fest, and mm -hmm. it's all about... My, as a financial coach, have always been um, focused on the small business entrepreneur. Okay. I am one. I understand them. I've been it my whole life. Yes. I know how they think. I know what their challenges are. And they're the underdog. And they're the underdog. Yes. And I relate to them because yes. I am one. Yes. And so my niche market as a financial coach has always been small business entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. Okay. So I wanted to... Again, as my soul's purpose, inspire and educate. Okay. And I wanted to take the San Diego community, which is 90% small business entrepreneurs, 10 or less employees. 90%, 90? 90 of San wow. Diego. We are not like LA, Chicago, Atlanta, New York, New York, York yeah. big, big, big this companies. Is, this we is are, this is the small business self employed community, mm -hmm. 90%. And I said, I want to take the pain out again. I want to 
take, find, have them carve out some time and take and listen to people who can take their business to the next level. What are they missing? Mm -hmm. Do they need sales? Do they need marketing? Do they need networking? Do they need money? Do they need follow-up systems? As an entrepreneur, you wear over 26 different hats. Right, right. You know, you're the, you're the, you're the visionary, you're the marketing, you're the salesperson, you're the secretary, you're the admin, you're social media, Everything. you're networking, you've got to set up centers of influence and strategic partners, and you've got to stay up to speed on continuing ed, or you, know, you have to know what your competition is. There's just so much going on with the small business person. They, they start a business with an idea, and they have a niche skill set, mm -hmm. but they don't realize what it takes to succeed in business. The whole, the whole package. Right, right. And you can't do it all. Right. And you shouldn't do it all. I, I, I see it. That's where I love that. And that's where we really connect is, is I'd like to look at, when I go into a business or buy a business, I'd like to look at it in reverse, right? Identify my weaknesses, right? Enhance them and then run with my strengths. Exactly. Right? I'm not the guy in the back. No. Don't, I, I hate being in my office. Right. It's, it's a dread for me, right? right? But you put me out. In the front, that's where you belong. let me go. Exactly. Let, but, but if I have somebody or people that are keeping everything in order in the back, exactly. right? Exactly. I'm, I'm good. You've got to find out your skill set and you've got to delegate everything else out. Yes. Uh, you know, over time. Yes. You know, one of the first things as a small business person is your bookkeeping and your record keeping. Mm -hmm. You know, for 75 bucks a month, you can delegate that out and get Jeez. rid of that pain. Such yeah. a no-brainer. You know, give it to somebody who loves to do it. That's exactly it. That's that's the key to success. Exactly. That's it's so simple. It is. But just not always easy for people. Right. right? They want to control everything. As entrepreneurs, we want to control it all. Right. Okay? That's not our job. Our job is to identify our skill set. Amen. Fit, figure out what we do best, shine at what we do best, and Get the resources around you and Amen. delegate it out. Keep your eye on the prize. Absolutely. What's that prize? You know, they always say, like, when men get lost, they, they refuse to ask for directions because they want to feel like no matter how long it takes them, right? right? That seems to be in our DNA. Thankfully, I'm the reverse. I just want just tell me how to get there. there I don't go. care. I want to get to that destination, exactly. right? So that's where I am so 1,000% behind you in that because... They lose, they think that they have to do it all. They think that they're the best at doing it all. No. And they're actually, a lot of times, the worst exactly. at doing all that. Because exactly. that's not, and here's what I'd say, is if you're going to do it all, and you're going to take all that heat, take all that stress, just go work for somebody, get a check, and have the exactly. weekends off. Right? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, no. that's, that's exactly it. No. So, so you have an event coming up. I do. When is it? It's um, Friday, September 16th. Okay. And Saturday, September 17th, okay. I have 12 speakers. They're all business experts in social media, in follow-up systems, in uh, business tax planning, in writing a business plan, in a so, um, just... Um, the whole umbrella. Everything to oh. do about business. Okay. Um, every component of it. Okay. There's okay. 12 speakers. There are 27 vendors that are business-related vendors. No... Okay. MLM, no, you know, no, other it's, it's stuff. Real. It's, it's just what are there's a ton of free resources. Score is going to be part of it. Wow. SBA is going to be part of it, and it's all the not only the re, there's going to be business coaches, business mentors, people who you can connect with to find what is the resource you need to take your business to the next level. The whole theme of it is find your missing piece. There's mm -hmm. only one piece that you need to find, maybe. Mm -hmm that can take you up to that next level. To, you as an entrepreneur have a purpose to share your products and services out in the marketplace. Yes. And yes. you've been given that inspiration inside for a reason. Yes. Identify what that reason is, what that why is. I love that. And then take it out into the world, but you can't do it all. So this is, and if, People um, can attend both days. It's going to be record. It's going to be videotaped. Okay. So uh, the tickets are ninety eight dollars. I wanted it under a hundred bucks. Right. 
okay, yeah. for all the speakers, all wow. the vendors. Um, and that's two days. And it's a two-day event. Wow. Right. Where at? At the Best Western Island Palms in uh, Ho um, Best Western Island Palms Hotel and Marina on Shelter Island. All right. And then before we close out, you're going to share where we can reach you, mm -hmm. where all that information is, and then you will also go on here. We have even more people commenting. I told oh you. <laughs> I told you, LJ. This girl is breaking through some major fear barriers, starting her first book, right? Killing it. Uh, constant letdown and failure. It, it doesn't stop when someone says you can't. You uh, do something, it starts, and it's the beginning of something beautiful. So it's just moving forward through that darkness, understanding that the darkness is only temporary. Lori, going through her own um, life boot camps right now, um, total inspiration. This girl is a beast. I love this girl. Lori, thank you for jumping on. And LJ again, yes, with about 10 uh, explanation points. So <laughs> they're, they're loving it because it's real yeah. and because it's coming from somewhere uh, based on wisdom. Mm -hmm. And you're, the value that you're bringing, right, is really second to none because it's, it's, the intention is pure. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say no matter what anybody thinks of you, no matter if they agree with you, they don't like the way you talk, they don't like the way you look, how you become bulletproof is if your intention is pure, mm -hmm. just move on. It is. Right? Just own it. If your intention is pure, the resources will show up to support you. Every time. Every time. Every that is single really time. Every step I've made forward, the resources have shown, have shown up to support that step. Well, I, I'm going to tell you, you're creating a fan base here, girl. <laughs> Lisa Harris McLean, again, she says, I was surrounded by people that didn't understand me or what I offered. I went to where people appreciated my resources. One year later, she has been, uh, I've been the vehicle for many women to connect and grow through networking together at meetups, events, and I created a, um, I created and host 100 miles from where I live. I'm loving this interview. That's what I'm talking about. That's See, great. that's what I'm talking about. This is your purpose, Thank right? You. you you work through this, and I tell people all the time, they're scared to death to come on, and right. I tell them, your story isn't about you. It's not about you. Your story, you made it because of this, right? Your story has nothing to do with you. I take you right off the hot seat because it's not about you. My story, when I do my keynote, my full keynote, you didn't get a chance to see that, a full hour keynote, I have people come up that you never thought a million years would come up and say, that was me, or that's my son, or that's my daughter, right? That's because true. because you have to show behind that black curtain. We all have a black curtain. Well, it's true. Is that, is it? It's true, Dave, because um, a minister friend of mine one time. So we put, we, uh, my marketing manager put up oh a link. Oh, my God. Thank Kate you. Lynch. That's my girl. I'm lost without her. I love Talk it. about Thank enhancing you. your weaknesses. Thank you. She enhances every single one of my weaknesses, and that's a lot. Well, <laughs> ticket sales just started today. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, my intention is 200 okay. uh, attendees. Okay. Uh, it's going to be pure value. I just, I'm oh. so excited about it. Pure value. Let me ask you this before we before we jump off. Is there anything that I didn't touch on? Or is there any little golden nugget that you want to talk about? There is. Okay. Because through my journey up until this point, mm -hmm. I wanted to be really clear on what was my strategic plan to reach my next goal. Okay. And I have kind of an eight-pointer. Beautiful. Bring it. That really, any time I'm going to make the next step. This is your guide. This is my guide. This is your roadmap. This is my roadmap. Listen, if, you're, if, if you ain't listening, you better listen now. Because I, I am. All right, let's bring it. I'm dying to hear this. The first step is make a decision. Okay. Because once you make, and it's a decision, mm -hmm. there's no one. Wandering. It's a decision. There's this no is, hoping. There's no ho it's a decision. This is what I'm go going to do. Okay. Okay. The next uh, thing is be determined. Okay. Okay. Determination. The determination is I am going to do this. Mm -hmm. 
The next thing is get focused. Okay. Eliminate all distractions. Yes, environment. Completely. Environment. And that's what, see, that's what, and I'm glad you said this because now it reminds me, that's what, that's what her um, event is. It's putting you, giving you an opportunity to be in an environment that wants you to grow, expand, scare the hell out of yourself, right? Because that's the only way to do that. Exactly. So you're creating an environment. Yeah. And if you don't think environment is important, it let is. me ask you, let me, let me prove something to you that it is. It's probably one of the most important things in your life. And you can, you can change it if you want. If me and you grew up in England, we wouldn't sound like we do. Right. Right? If me and you grew up in Spain, we wouldn't sound like we do. Right. If I didn't grow up in New Jersey, I wouldn't sound like I do, right? Exactly. But be, that's, how, that's how powerful our subconscious is Completely. and how strong our environment is. See, I've been out here since 2008. As soon as I talk to my crew from back home, I go right to the Jersey. <laughs> I'm right to the Jersey Shore, right? That, that, that's, but so it's, environment, environment is huge. so big. Huge. Environment will either make you or break you. Right, and your early environment, right? It made you. I don't right. care about the stumbling blocks and all this, all that, right? All the fall downs, all the crying at night. Right. But that's what made you, right? right? That's what made you who you are. Exactly. That's why you can keep going. I happen to have a motorcycle accident; it almost killed me. That made gave me an aha moment. You know what it said? I was afraid to sell my first business because what else could I do? Right. I'm doing really well, right? That motorcycle accident made me realize that tomorrow's not guaranteed. That's all I needed. And from that point on, it was on. It was, Bring it on. It, it was on. What, what else? Okay, so after you eliminate all distractions, okay. get yourself in a good environment. Okay. okay? Chunk down the goal. Love it. Love it. Now break that down for people. What does that mean? That means you have a big vision mm -hmm. of what you want to accomplish. Chunk it down to your first step. Okay. What is your next step? Beautiful. What is your next step? When mm -hmm. I decided to do dynamic impact events, I had the vision of what I wanted to accomplish. I had to go get a business license. Okay? Right, right. I had to get a website. I had to start developing marketing material. I had to get speakers. I had to get vendors. Right. I had, you know, there was lots of components. Chunk it down and write all the steps down and then take the first step okay. and get started. That's it. That's it. And then once you reach your first goal, I got a business license. I got a frame. I put it on my wall. It was my celebration. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge your first step. And that just gives you more confidence to take the next step. It's so oh, man. And you just take the next step, which was, all right. I need to put, get some marketing material. I'm not a graphic artist. I called a graphic artist. She put everything, and she amazingly put my website, did mm -hmm. all my marketing material for free. Wow. Because she said, I believe in what you're doing, and I want to contribute. See, now, again, the best Hollywood screenwriters couldn't write this, right? right. Because you're taking that action, right. and I, it becomes magical. It, you know, it's, things showed up. <laughs> I know. And, and people. And people and resources showed up. And I went to SCORE, and they said, we have 32,000 small business people. We're going to send out a free email notifying them about your event. And I went, really? Somebody else talked to me and said, you know, I know um, the programmer on the number one country radio station in San Diego. I want you on their show. All these things started happening. And I went, oh, my God, I guess I'm doing this. It's so true. Don't worry about how in the very beginning. No. As long as your why is big enough. Yeah. And your why is obviously huge, much bigger than you. It was. Right? It was I wanted to contribute and I wanted to inspire and I wanted to educate the small business person yes. on succeeding in business and okay. taking their intuition, their dream, their vision and have it become a reality. And surround and them with the right, right environment. What right I love people, that. the right resources that can have it happen. Okay. Um, Radiate with confidence. Okay. Self-image. Self-image. And then make a decision to take the next step. Just go. So number one, make a decision. Number two, be determined. Number three, get focused. Number four, eliminate distractions. Number five, chunk down the goal. 
Six, get started. Seven, reach your first goal and celebrate. And eight, radiate with confidence. And nine, make the decision to take the next and step. And just do it. And that is my strategy for success in everything that I've done. When you look back, that's it. That's it. That's it. So I know if I do have the next thing, I know what my strategy is. Make yeah. a decision. Right. I know what the steps are. I don't have to think about it. I've already got my roadmap on how I can get from this success to the next success to the next success as I evolve as an individual to be my best person. And such a big point I want to make here. Understand, make no mistake, this is very simple, but just not always easy, right? It's simple, it's life. It's simple, but not always easy. And if it was easy, like the old saying goes, everyone would do it, right? right? And what would it mean? It doesn't have any value to it right. if it's so easy. So how can they find you? Are you on Facebook? I know you are. I am on <laughs> Facebook, and um, I, I run three businesses. Okay, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Um, uh, Financial Solutions Agency is the name of my agency. Okay. Um, the Business Network Connection, okay. the Meetup, and then Dynamic Impact Events is www.dynamicimpactevents.com okay. is going to be my event company. Okay, and I always forget to do this sometimes when the Wi-Fi cuts out and we do a second, we come back on. There's gonna be two live airings, but before we start to really share them, um, uh, Kate, uh, my my uh, my everything. Uh, she will uh, combine them, and then we're going to share them so people don't get lost, mm -hmm. right? Um, but once we share it, now I'm going to share it on your timeline. Now you can respond, interact, and post all your information on there, mm -hmm. right? Then, like you said, once once it goes on YouTube, you're going to be able to repurpose this, reshare it, and uh, and I want to thank you for being so um, real and letting us behind that black curtain because it's right here. I don't have to say it, it's right here. You're changing lives because of what you went through. You're willing to be that courageous person and make some of the hardest decisions that a human being can make, but because you're doing it for the right reasons. It's always about intention. When the intention is pure, right. you're bulletproof. Absolutely. You are bulletproof. And I would say take off the mask. Give me that, what's that mean? I want to hear this. For many time, for many years, I had a mask and wouldn't tell my story mm -hmm. because there was still a lot of pain. It wasn't until I started sharing my story that the story didn't matter anymore. Where I was going, had it wasn't more, yours. It, it it was mine, but it was the story didn't matter. I should say, it wasn't about you. My vision of my life was bigger than the story that I lived. That's, and that's Monster Motivator TV. That's it, and what I meant by it, it's not your story, obviously it's your story. I should have, I read, should have worded it differently. It's not about you, right? When you get down to the core of it, your story is about these people that are going, oh my God, maybe I can. Absolutely. Even if it's just a maybe, right? Start with that. Let's, because you ultimately want to shift people's perspective, right? And, and, and if I always say, if, Whatever, whatever I say, take what works, throw out the rest, right? Absolutely. But if there's something that can just say, if you can just say, in my keynote, if you could just say, I never thought of it that way, I won. Absolutely. I won. Is that? Absolutely. And just take off the mask and be real, be authentic, and not be afraid to share your story and be real and take your next step. And I promise you, I've done it so many times, but I promise you, you that you take the next step and the resources will be there for you. Now, this is the first time I've ever done this, but this is this is just, it's telling me I need to do it. My, my, in it, what is it? Internal guidance system. Internal guidance ITS. system is telling me, do not stop this enthusiasm. How do you feel before, during, and now after with Monster Motivator TV that people, if there's somebody out there, and there's plenty, right, that, um, said, you know what, I can't do this, or I'm afraid to do this. What's your experience? To me, 
I don't identify fear because I want to want to put the label of fear on something I've never done before. Okay, but the ones that do, and they're if afraid to come on. If you do have fear, and you listen to your insides that is moving you, pushing you, asking you to take the next step, take it. Okay. Just take it. Okay. Don't judge it. Don't analyze it. Don't overthink it. If there's something in you wanting to come out, and there's, identify what that, just the first step is. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't have to know the big picture, just you, the first step. Yeah. Okay? Take that first step and see what comes out of that and what opportunities and what resources show up and what, op, you know, what things yes. happen. Yes. Because more will be revealed. You can't know the whole picture because it hasn't been revealed to you it's yet. It's impossible. It's impossible. Right. All you have to do is if you have something inside that you're wanting to have come out to in better and empower anybody in a service, in a product, just take that next step and see what's revealed. And it's going to be and okay. Just, and it's going to be okay. And just be aware of what shows up and the resources and the people and the things that you didn't even know were available. And, and that's, I mean, that's it. That's everything in a nutshell. And there's nothing else that really can be shared. You just now have to take that next step. Now, as we're, um, as we're logging off here, as we're getting to the end, everyone knows, and I just want to share Monster Motivator TV. We are a live stream TV show that's going to either going to come to you or come to, or you can come to our studio in Marietta, but we want to highlight, we want to promote entrepreneurs, business owners, nonprofits that are making a difference in the community. We want to bring that value to you live, real, raw, live and in color. And that's what we pride ourselves on. We're going to take you behind that black curtain because that's what it's really about. And this is a living proof that it, it really means something. And people are searching for that. They're searching for that constantly. So, Monster Motivator TV, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Barbara will uh, connect, reconnect with you. Please reach out to her if you have any questions. You just want to connect. She's an awesome, awesome lady. If you can't find her, I know where to find her. Just reach <laughs> out to me. And as always, keep making it happen monster motivator style. <laughs> I knew I'd get you to do it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. That's